Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Jen. I am a homeschooling mom of six kids. One of my, well, my oldest child, he's graduated now, but this is our ninth year homeschooling. So we've been doing this for quite a long time. My youngest is in grade one and my oldest who's currently still homeschooling is in grade 11. So I thought I would kind of do some videos focusing on each of the subjects that we do in our homeschool and how we approach them, how we do them, what curriculum we use, what resources or extras that we throw in there too to just kind of supplement and help out uh, whatever the kids are learning and working on at the time. Um, so today's video, I thought I would focus on math. We have done a few different math curriculums. The one that we started with when we were first homeschooling and we actually used it for quite a few years. My two oldest kids, they used it. So when we started homeschooling, they were um, in public school for a couple of years. My oldest was in grade four and my youngest was in grade two. So we kind of started them out from that point and we were using Matthew C. Uh, Matthew C is a great program. You have like a workbook and there are videos you watch at the time when we were doing it. It was like DVDs and stuff. You watch the video, he teaches the lesson and then you have like a workbook that you fill in the answers and then you have these blocks that you use to kind of help like tens blocks and stuff to use to help you know, work out the problems and stuff. And it is very much like you learn a concept and you sort of build on that. But the way that it's a little bit different is as opposed to learning like a little bit of everything, like let's say you're doing grade five math, as opposed to learning different concepts throughout the year, they really just focus on one main, maybe two main concepts that entire year. Um, and the whole premise is that they want the child to master that concept before they build on on it and move on to the next thing. It worked really well for my older kids. I don't really have any complaints about it. It really is just personal preference if that is how you want your kids to learn and if that kind of goes hand in hand with your kids learning styles. Um, my kids enjoyed it. They both did really well. We just ended up at a certain point. When my oldest was like grade seven-ish is when we switched him to teaching textbooks and we did the same thing with my daughter. But again, no complaints. We just kind of decided to go a different route and kind of go back to the more, I guess, traditional style of like learning a little bit of everything across the board, but it was definitely a great foundation for them. Now, since then, uh, with my two like middle kids, um, they have done the first two levels of Matthew C and then we switched them over like a little bit sooner. I believe it was grade four that we switched them over to teaching textbooks as well. And that's what they're both currently doing. My middle daughter, well, she's in grade nine right now and my son is in grade seven um, and they're both doing teaching textbooks. As far as my two little girls go, my one daughter who is in grade four, she has actually been doing, um, she had done master books for a little bit and we did enjoy that. But then the Good and the Beautiful had released their math program and they actually made the PDFs available for you to just download the whole course for free. So we decided to try that. And it's actually been going really well. I like the format. And also because my daughter, she's used to doing the good, in, like we do um, like the language arts, good in the beautiful levels. And we also do some of their science units. Their programs are, there's a similarity in terms of the layout and the teaching style across the board of all their subjects, I find. Um, so she's kind of familiar with that and um, she's doing really well. Like it was a little bit of a learning curve at the start when we first switched her over. Cause like I said, she was doing master books and master books is very much like story sort of like they would integrate the math 
into like an ongoing story which was fun and she did enjoy that and it was more a matter of me just sitting down with her and going over concepts and explaining what the work was but now there's a little bit less of that and there's also they have a video that the children watch with a teacher going over what that lesson is going to be about going through examples with them they actually work through some of the questions with them and then they have their independent work that they work on so I would say um, which I actually was a little bit surprised to be honest with you but I would say that the good and the beautiful math is a little more intensive it definitely I mean obviously she's in a new grade but it takes her quite a bit longer to do and it is I feel like okay I feel like with master books like she was staying on a certain concept for longer over like a longer period of time and now with the good and the beautiful it's not that it's like fast in the sense that they are not teaching it thoroughly enough <clears throat> but I just find that like she's learning at a quicker pace but in each lesson they go back and they do review so you're constantly pulling in like other lessons that you know they've done to make sure that they're keeping it fresh in their mind and and you know like just reviewing it so we've had our share we've done quite a few different like i said uh math programs and there's pros and cons to all of them i'm not so much here to talk about that um it really does depend on your kids learning style how much involvement you want to have the thing we do love about um teaching textbooks is how just sort of like fully integrated it is I mean it's the lessons are there the questions are there it's done in an online program and um, and then it self corrects it marks the whole thing for them now the way we do it in our home school is I set sort of the bar I guess for the kids to get over 85% then they don't have to redo the lesson if they get less than 80 like if they get 85 or less then we go in and we like I cancel out the questions that they got wrong and then they have to redo them. So that's how we do it in our homeschool. Actually, once they kind of get to high school level, I bump that up to a 90. <laughs> and again, that's just how we do it. It's, it's less about the mark as it is for me to make sure I want to make sure that they are like really truly understanding what they're doing and if they're getting a certain number of questions wrong then I start to think like okay what is it that they're not grasping what are they having trouble with and I just want to make sure that before they move on to the next lesson that they fully have grasped like what it is that they're doing. I know some people think that maybe it's not as intense of a program as other programs again having done quite a few different ones I would say it just really depends on your child and how they are best suited to that specific curriculum we haven't like I haven't really just like completely hands down not liked any of the math programs that we have chosen sometimes we switch it up just for the sake of switching it up if I feel like they're getting a little bored with it um, and other times we just stick with it because it works and there's really no point like changing it just to change it either so anyway with that being said even though we've sort of moved on from Matthew C at this point because even my daughter who's in grade one um, I have already started her on the good and the beautiful math as well and as of now I plan on keeping her on that until the foreseeable future but um, we still do utilize uh, quite a few of the like extras that we got with Matthew C mostly the thing that I love the most is the counting blocks so um, I keep them here they just kind of come loose uh, or I guess I don't know I think they you can get them in a wooden tray I'm not sure but um, we just kind of got them as they were and then I actually bought this it's like a tackle box and they fit in here great and they're also like easy to put away and access and see everything at once so as you can see here they're color coat they're color coded and they go all the way from ones up to the hundreds and they're really durable they're like heavy duty plastic and they can actually like interlock into um, each other so 
Even though we're not doing the Matthew C program, these are just great. I found that these have been fantastic. All my kids have used them. My two younger daughters are using them even now, you know, for adding, subtracting. Uh, it's just great. It's a great visual. I find with math, like a lot of my kids are like visual, like it really, I don't know, it just like explains it better to them as opposed to just seeing numbers when they can see the visual of the number just seems to like resonate better with them. So we love these. We use these all the time. Again, um, I just keep it in this taco box and we leave it in the schoolroom and just whenever they need it, they just reach for it and it works out great. So even if you're, I mean, I know you can kind of get versions of those wherever, but you can just get those on their own if you want from the Matthew C site as like a separate purchase. <clears throat> the other thing that we got from there as well, that was also just like an extra, is this Matthew C fraction overlay kit. And that's basically what it is. It's a kit once they kind of hit the, the fractions portion <laughs> of their math, like they would do an entire level uh, I don't remember like what level they introduce fractions at, but this is this would be like an entire level of math that they would do just solely focusing on fractions. Again, even now with my daughter doing um, The Good and the Beautiful and my older kids doing teaching textbooks, um, this has come in handy. So it just comes in this little folded kit and each one of these envelopes has different... Well, this one here has halves and thirds. This one has fourths, fifths, and this has sixths, um, all the way up to sixteenths and then different units. And basically what it is, they are, um, it reminds me of, you know when you used to have overheads? Do you remember being in school with the overhead machine? That's how old I am. Just, I'm dating myself right there. It'll give you these clear, you can't really see. I'll have to put, one of these behind like that and you can see that it's divided through and they give you different ones so thirds and halves and then you have these colored sheets that go behind them depending on what the question is and what you're trying to uh, figure out and they're kept in these uh pockets you know so the kids know like which ones they need to grab it's great, again, for them if they're just trying to visualize the fractions. It also has these little charts here to reference as well. So this is just another great like extra that we have that we use in our in our homeschool for math. These are things that I just kind of keep out. They're actually just kind of out on the kids' desks and then whoever needs them, you know, they just kind of pull at them. Yeah, so that's the Math UC Fraction Overlay Kit. I just printed these and then stuck them in page protectors and these are actually all from the teaching textbooks website so if you go on teachingtextbooks.com actually a lot of the programs like a lot of the curriculums if you go on their sites they will have resources there like free resources that you can use download print so this is where i got those from um teaching textbooks so i just have a multiplication facts reference sheet for the kids it's mostly for my younger daughter um, that one and then I also have the division facts these will um, all go up to 12 and then I have a fraction decimal percent facts so it basically shows you like the fraction and then what the decimal point would be and the percent would be um, to convert those so they're they're really just like quick reference um, sheets I don't want my kids like using these in place of like knowing their multiplication and their division facts and all that stuff. But every once in a while, it's just like a quick little, or to double check that they did in fact use the right answer. Um, so yeah, so these, and then another thing that we do from time to time is we do morning time together. First thing in the morning, we sit at the kitchen table, usually sometimes on the couch, and we just kind of do some group subjects. So we do um, our devotional, we'll do poetry, we'll do memory verse, um, and then we just like throw in things like every day I kind of switch it up. We'll do some science, we'll do some animal facts, we will do some quizzes. I have some I've shown them before that they're Dr. Noggins quiz cards um, on a whole bunch of different subjects. We'll do some history, we'll do read alouds, we'll do all kinds of things. And then every once in a while I throw in some sort of like flashcards. We have like our 
uh, prime ministers were learning, all of our prime ministers, and time, money, things like that. And then we also have the math ones. So I have, and I don't, these are all, I think I got these on, I either got these at christianbook.com, they may have come from Amazon as well. I'm pretty sure you can get them on Amazon, but from Carson DeLoza, and I have just a whole bunch of these. I didn't even bring them all up, but we have multiplication, we have addition, fractions. Did I say division already? No, division, <laughs> subtraction. I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but I mean, we know what flashcards are. It has the um, question on the front, the answer on the back, and it's just kind of that, you know, quick sort of, I'll go around the table, depending on which one it is, like I'll do, obviously I'll do like subtraction and addition with the littler ones and then we'll go around again and we'll do like fractions and division and multiple and things like that with the older kids it's just you know to keep them on their toes to get them sort of answering quick it's just a good refresher and it's fun because they make everything competitive sometimes there's candy involved that's all i'm gonna say so these are great anytime like you're looking for just like an extra to kind of brush up on math facts or any kind of facts of any kinds don't underestimate flashcards and it's easy to just incorporate them into like morning time together. And then the last thing I wanted to show you guys was, I mean, there's obviously tons of apps, like there's all kinds of apps you could use for all kinds of things, obviously. We don't use like too much technology in, in our homeschool. What I mean by that is I just don't want, it's more a matter of I don't want my kids sitting in front of like a tablet or a computer like the entire day. I don't want that to be the only resource they use. <sighs> For every single thing so that being said one that we use a lot and it's really simple and gets to the point it's called multiplication memorizer i think you can just get it on the app store or on even the google play the google app store so they have it downloaded on their tablets because they do uh, teaching textbooks they have them on tablets that they can do and then i have this on there as well and this is kind of what it looks like i might just insert like a different maybe some b-roll here showing you guys how it works but there's the multiplication tables there's time uh trials and then there's like multiple games little like mini games that you can play but basically they can go through you can either pick the times table you want to do or set up at random um, and they and it could be like timed where either they have a certain amount of time to complete the answers or they try to do it as fast as they can and then see how long it took them to answer the questions and they randomize the questions and it's it's fun because they try to like beat their own time, their personal best or sometimes they try to like do it against each other and see who it gets the like i said everything is a competition but whatever if it works it works this is another great like every once in a while i'll just be like work on your you know, do your times table, <laughs> do your multiplication memorizer app for like 10 minutes. I might do that a couple times a week. I think that's pretty much it. I didn't bring them up, but we do have a couple of games that we've got at the Dollar Tree and they're like, you know, bingo where it's like, you have to answer the question to get the bingo correct, roll the dice and you have to like move your person, your little token to the right answer for the question so we do have like little extras like that we don't use those all the time those are easy to find like i said go to the dollar store or i know sometimes um especially around back to school you could find it at walmart or target places like that or even on amazon pretty much anything to just kind of like keep it fun, work on their facts from time to time, especially, you know, they take a break during the summer and it's amazing, like as quickly as they can learn, it's amazing how quickly they can forget as well. So yeah, these are just a few little things that we added into our homeschool, you know, not making it too overwhelming. It's just whenever we have a minute here and there, we find the time to throw these, these things in and some of the resources that just help them kind of get through their math. And again, it's all about how your child learns. If they are a visual learner, things like the blocks and the fraction overlays, things like that dice can be really helpful in them grasping the concepts that they, that they need to grasp. I know for me growing up, I was not very good at math. Like at all in fact i failed grade nine math <laughs> so there you go and went to summer school but uh i did have a teacher in grade 10 who completely changed how i learned math and taught it in a way that made sense to me and it makes all the difference in the world so on that note i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'd love it for you to subscribe and i'll see you next time